thought you had a live liver at St. James's. So? Yes. It's been cancelled. It's at 11. So you'll be leaving the ward in my capable hands, then, will you? Miss Naylor will be looking after things from my end. Then we'll be working together because Diane's called in sick. Fantastic. What brings you down to kill her, Mrs. Beecham? Mr. Cominetti is a patient of mine. He's due for a valve replacement next week. You're not going to cancel, are you? Only as a last resort. I have to have that operation. I, I, I planned around it. <laughs> the restaurant won't open itself. Are you the next Gordon Ramsay? Uh, hardly. But I am going on to bigger and better things. Aren't we all? No beds on Darwin? Mr. Cominetti presented with acute abdominal pain. Would you mind if I take a look at the x-rays? If uh, you're going to be away for the day, it's as well to be informed. Hmm, it's uh, perforated viscous. Most likely a duodenal ulcer. Yeah, I can see the free gas under the diaphragm. That's a problem. Right, so what would you recommend? If in doubt, cut it out. But on this occasion, I think I'll take the more cautious approach and treat it with antibiotics. That's unusually conservative for you. Well, as I'm sure Connor's explained, the strain of surgery could prove too much for the gentleman's heart. We don't want to kill him, do we? Let's set up an IV infusion of Kefenmet. Excellent. Let's keep him under hourly obs and uh, we'll take it from there. Rick, I'd be happy if Mr. Jordan checked in on Carlo from time to time. Be my pleasure. I suppose my cardiothoracic experience won't harm. If Carla has no objection. Anything that gets me out of here? <laughs> Fine. I'll come and check on you later. Okay? Thank you. Jack. Let's put an NG tube into decompress the stomach and uh, make sure the nursing staff know he's nil by mouth. Of course. And keep an eye on him. Carlo. Mr. Jordan, he has the tendency to operate on my patients when I'm not there. He seems to be taking a very keen interest in Carlo. What exactly do you want me to do? Just keep me in the loop. I'll be at St. James's. It must be difficult being here. Where is he? Where's the man? Hey, take me half an hour to track you down. For one horrible moment, I thought you'd shuffled off your mortal coil. Oh, hello. Sign me up for whatever health plan he's on. He couldn't afford it. Oh, financial advice on the NHS now. Love it. Do you know this man, Carlo? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so, yes. Adam Butterfield. I'm the silent partner in Carlo's new restaurant. Oh, I haven't got used to the silent part yet. Hey, can't help being loud. Got a lot to shout about. The Italian restaurant's making a big comeback, and Carlo is at the vanguard. Is that right? Oh, uh, yeah. Cominetti's. Opening in Duke Street. Eight weeks today. Well, that's going to be big news. This man is a genius. Duke Street. Very nice. Oh, this is classy stuff. What's your best dish? Yeah, uh, the old family recipes. Uh, spessatino, osobuco. Fegato aleceto balsamico. Yeah, and pizza. Yeah, and pizza, yeah. Oh, don't make me feel hungry. Well, the kitchen's an open plan in the center of the restaurant. We're going to get this huge wood-burning oven and an open charcoal grill. Mm. Yeah, well, that's why I need that valve operation. This ulcer thing is just, you know, so irritating. Actually, I need to talk to you about that. What? Slight problem with the wood-burning oven and grill jobby, yeah? Uh, look, could uh, you excuse us for a moment? Sure. Thanks. What's wrong? The guy's coming to put the oven in, coming over from Italy. Yeah? Want cash. So? So, we need ten grand in readies, and I've got a cash flow problem. Uh, yeah, but, but you're loaded. Oh, Carlo, you don't understand. Next week, next month, no problem. This week, this month, disaster. Got the tax man sniffing round. Oh, God, you never said this. Oh, come on, everybody cooks the books to get by. It's a way of life. Not for me, it isn't. Anyway, look, I, I haven't got that sort of money. All the cash I've got is put aside for my heart op. Yeah. Yeah, look, you're right. I shouldn't have even asked. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Uh, doctor? What's the matter? Uh, the pain's worse. Right, we should up his analgesia and give him an anti-emetic. Yeah, I thought this tube was meant to help the ulcer. Yeah, it is. What, you're telling me he's uh, meant to be in this state? Yeah. Well, can't you just do something to get rid of it, like cut it out? That would be inadvisable with Carlo's heart condition. Uh, technically, my colleague is correct, although the conservative approach can take longer to get results. But technically, seeing as Carlo's my patient... We should stick with the current treatment. Well, you'd better be sure about this. The surgeons know what they're doing, Adam. Carlo, because your temperature is normal, we're just going to continue with the antibiotics and up your analgesia. If the pain persists, we'll reconsider our options. Okay. Yo. Uh, 
Definite deterioration. What's happened? Antibiotics aren't working. Your abdomen's becoming infected with fluid leaking from your ulcer. Well, you have to give them a chance. Oh, sorry. We could give him another shot of antimatic. We've given him the chance. They're irrelevant now. This man is in agony. He's developed generalized peritonitis. Well, it's still early days. We're going to have to get you up into theatre, Carlo. Mickey, will you put the theatre staff on standby, please? Tell them we need to set up for a laparoscopic yeah. procedure. Sure. No, wait. Second thoughts. See if a Darwin theatre is free. What do you think you're doing? The patient has a history of cardiothoracic problems. It makes sense. You can't keep doing this every time his back's turned. This has got nothing to do with Rick Griffin. I don't believe you. Look, the clinical situation has changed. You can see that. What about his heart? The risk of his CT condition becoming a problem is negligible. He's down for an elective procedure on the NHS. he would have to wait another four months. Still, at least you get to operate on Darwin. Meaning? Don't pretend that's not where you'd rather be. If you want to make yourself useful, get a full medical history for our patient because we're missing some of his notes. If Rick was pushing for this op, you wouldn't question it. Diabetes, epilepsy? No. No, no major illnesses recently? No, well, it's just a heart thing. Yeah, and any past or recent surgery? No. No. What's this? What? Well, it looks like an old scar and we don't have all your medical notes just yet, so I need to check that out. Uh, operation I had when I was a kid. Uh, fell off my chopper. Oh, Harley? No, a rally. I went down this hill, hit a post box. <laughs> do you know what they did? What damage was caused? Uh, uh, something to do with a spleen? Well, it couldn't have been a splenectomy or you'd be on meds for life. Oh, uh, I don't see how that affects things. There could be some scar tissue which might make things just awkward. Awkward for what? Carlo, we're all set. We don't want a small ulcer getting in the way of your big plan, do we? We just need you to sign the consent forms. Uh, oh, she said it wouldn't be so easy. Yeah, Carlo had a laparotomy when he was a kid. And? It may well make a laparoscopic procedure too tricky. For the inexperienced among us, maybe. You wouldn't leave a commie chef to prepare your white truffle risotto now, would you? <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> I reckon you've got yourself a pretty decent surgeon here. As if by magic. We just need your signature on that, and we can get you prepped. OK. Mr. Jordan. <clears throat> the scar tissue from the previous operation could make it difficult to see what you're doing on the screen. That's going to increase the risk of a bleed and put more pressure on his heart. The man has generalised peritonitis. What sort of pressure do you think that's putting on his ticker? Would you like me to go and get Connie down here, and perhaps we can ask her? Why is this so important to you? Because it's the right decision. If he has an arrest down here on Keller... He may not make it up to Darwin. I didn't come back to Holby to play second fiddle to Rick Griffin. No, you're making sure you're not. Look, he's not here, so this is my call. I'm telling you, Nick, if you don't give Carlo the full facts before you go ahead with this, I'm going to call St. James's. I love it when you get excited. I'm being serious. Yes, and I'm just having a bit of fun. Of course he has to be told. I shall go and talk to him. <sighs> Mr. Community. Just before we take you up to theatre... Uh, what's up? Nothing. I just need to make you aware that there are risks involved with this surgery. Can someone please explain to me exactly what's going on? Because we're using a laparoscope, coupled with your medical history, we won't know exactly what we're dealing with until we get inside. But it's not impossible. No. Recovery times are quicker than normal, so you should be up on your feet in time for your valve op. Well, you've got to go with it, then. Oh, hang on, hang on. Look, I'm the one going under the knife, Adam, not you. Oh, the way things are going could all be a waste of time anyway. Oh, oh. How many of these ops have you done, then? How many meals have you cooked? Anyone die on you yet? Not over sewing an ulcer, no. Right, let's get him moving, please. Up to Darwin Theatre. Adam, I need to talk to you. We haven't got a restaurant without that oven, right? Uh, Carlo, let's get you well first, yeah? Listen, Vet, bought us a bit of time with the Naples boys. OK, OK, let's do it. Wait, you're going ahead? Don't sound so surprised. He's explained it all to us, love. Don't you worry. Shall we page Connie? No need, she's busy. Miss Naylor may be a warrior. At least she's thorough. Line to Max Lee's. Coming through. Was he over 90? Yeah, he's tougher than he looks. Now the suction ready, please, Victoria. There it is. Look at that. I'm going to have to clean that up in preparation for over -sewing. Thank you. Dr Rose, happy? Yes, thank you. The patient's stable. Good, good. 
Have you had any experience of this procedure, Miss Naylor? I'm not scared of talking up my attributes, you know that. One of the things I've always liked about you... Swab. Have you ever oversewn an ulcer laparoscopically before? I know all the stages, of course. So are you saying you're up to the procedure then? It's a kind offer. Sorry, are you saying you're not up to it then? No, of course not. I'm here, I'm supervising. As a registrar, you are here to learn. Unless, of course, you're not ready. I haven't read up on the procedure. If I've been given some time to prepare. I can talk you through it. Best offer you'll have all day. Yeah, very nice. Don't like to disappoint. Can you move the camera all to the left of the ulcer, please? Nice and easy. No, wait, this doesn't feel right. Oh, you're thinking too much. Am I? You know what I mean. It's difficult to make out the scar tissue. The scar tissue is fine. Oh, we've got a bleed on the mesentery. Yeah, let me. The BP's dropping. No, she's torn it. Steady the ports, thank you. It was difficult to see. Calm down. I am calm. It's in a difficult place to access. Fine. Contract. The name they give to mistakes. You don't have to rub it in. It's a tricky procedure, Jay. It was good that you had a go. Still, no damage done, so you can relax. Don't worry, Nick. I'll get over it. I admire your ambition. But next time, you really should tell us if you're unqualified for a procedure. Neat work. Thank you. BP's up. No. Pulse is slow. His heart is struggling. He's in the F. Defibs. Charge to 200. I believe it was obviously too much for his heart. Charging. Come on, Jack, quickly. Come on, Carlo, stick with us. Think of the business. Clear. No, go again. Hedge Mr. Beecham for me. Clear. No, the aren't working. Aortic stenosis. There's not enough blood in the heart to get it going. I'm going to crack him open and get him on bypass. I'm going to lose him otherwise. No, you can't do that. Watch me. I'm not going to let this man die. Dr. Rose, we need to be quick. Put his heart up in this. Look, I think we should shock him again. Hi, Dean. I need better access to the chest. I don't believe this. No. Right, ready? More light, please. Someone move the table up. Ah, decided to stick around after all, did we? What do you think you're doing, Mr. Jordan? This is not your territory. The patient arrested. External resuscitation was not effective, so I opted for internal massage paddles quickly. I thought you should come straight away. Yeah, that's fine. So what do you intend to do? Put the patient on bypass and await the cardiothoracic surgeon, obviously. Charging to 30. Right, I hold the floor while I finish off next door. Certainly. What are you doing, Mr. Jordan? Yep, you've got sinus. You have an amazing ability to adapt to any situation. Well, what can I say? I was a boy scout. Right, well, you did well. Okay, we need to put him on bypass. Let's have aortic cannula pass strings. Should we give it the heparin? We're ready. He does need his valve replacement now. Oh, I'm well aware of that. I hope it hasn't been too long since you assisted on one, if you'd care to do the honours. Yeah, if that's what you want. Oh, you're the only one here qualified. Right, we agreed mechanical. Let's get the valve ready, please. Um, actually, I took the liberty of ordering ahead. Now, that's almost too good, Mr. Jordan. And if your registrar's not busy, perhaps she could write up the theatre notes. Yes, Miss Naylor would be very happy to do that. All right, once the patient's on bypass, we can start. Could you sort out your face? You've got some nerve. All part of the job description. Yeah, and surprise, surprise, you're in Mrs. Beecham's good books. I didn't know the man was going to arrest, did I? Well, sort. What he wants to do is bake a few pizzas. You wouldn't have shown any interest in Carl if he didn't have a CT condition. <laughs> How can you say that? Because it's true. If you're desperate to get back into cardiothoracics, you'd do anything. Well, I was good. I trained here under one of the best. And I was going to be one of the best. So you admit it? OK, yeah. This is where it started for me. And if an opportunity came up, then I'd take it. But to suggest I'd do anything... I thought you knew me better than that. Your eyes lit up when you saw Connie with Carlo. I showed an interest, so what? An interest that nearly killed him. Look, the patient deteriorated. If we'd have done the opt-down on Keller, we wouldn't have had the bypass to hand. What was I supposed to do? And when Rick finds out? You have a very suspicious nature, Jack. You're not the only one who came here to get on with a career, Nick. Yeah, you came here to be a consultant. Don't think I didn't know what you were up to. If I hadn't tried the procedure, where would get out that I don't have the gut? You took on something you knew you weren't up to. It's behaviour like that which ruins reputations. Wait a minute. Is that a threat? I would think twice before mentioning it to Rick. 
You see, people around here, they don't know you like I do. Things have changed. I've got friends here. I know you'll be going home to that empty flat tonight. No phoning to see how your day was. So what? I'm the only one who knows the real Jack Naylor. I knew you'd do this. Checkmate. We saved a man's life. Connie's fine with it. Rick can't do or say a thing. You know what? I'm back. Hemoglobin's 9.7, so there's no further need for a blood transfusion. Urine output's good. You're doing well. Lovely. Hell of a time to get cold feet. Um, what do I really know about you? Is that you got memory loss or something? <laughs> Ten grand's a lot of money to me. It's a drop in the ocean to the money I paid out. No, it's not just that. But then what? You don't know the first thing about food. I served you osobuco, and you asked for ketchup. I like ketchup. What's the problem? How do I know I can trust you? Hey, hey, whoa, listen, I'm straight down the line. I've got a, a good reputation and a clean track record. I don't think he's interested in that. I think he's looking for excuses. You've got to take a punt, Carlo, otherwise you'll never know. We're buying into the dream. What if it turns into a nightmare? I'm not like you. So that's it, hmm? End of partnership? I'm sorry. I'd rather stick to what I know. Carlo, I know this is none of my business, but I pulled out all the stops for you because I believed in you. And now you're just going to quit. I'm tired of fighting. You're going to chuck in the towel. If I'd have known this... What? You'd have given the antibiotics a chance to work. I've got a second mortgage on my house to pay for this deal. Sorry. Yeah, well, I'll get my solicitor to speak to yours. So, what are you going to do then? Well, I've got the building, I've got the equipment. Who needs a wood burning stove when you've got gas? So, you're going to go ahead on your own? Oh, he's a good chef, but there are others. What's pizza anyway, except a tarted up Welsh rarebit? See ya. Well, you're Mr. Griffin's patient, he'll be taking over. Over to you. Get another bag of fluid. Rick, how did our live liver go? Not a hitch. Great. Anything to report here? No. Nothing at all? We had to operate on Carlo Comagnetti, the perforated ulcer. Why? He deteriorated badly, but we did the op on Darwin and did Mrs. Beecham replace his valve at the same time. Mr. Jordan? That's Mrs. Beecham. He did a good job. Oh, looks like rain. One lift, Jack? I'll be fine, thanks. All right. Good night, Nick. I will be needing my parking space tomorrow. I'm sorry, I, I only parked there because I knew you were at St. James's. Sure. Safe journey home. Good night. <laughs>